The Workers' Party also notes that there have been some elements in our society, or perhaps from abroad, that have used Sika as a dog whistle, masquerading racism for genuine economic concerns. The Workers' Party accepts that genuine economic concerns exist and that it is fair to raise concerns about them. However, we abhor and denounce the racism and xenophobia that has become a part of the public narrative in some quarters. Some have gotten away resorting to loose and vile language online as an outlet for their frustration, something they wouldn't do in person, or worse, extended this behaviour to the real world. This can never be right and must also be rejected and condemned. I now move on to the second part of my speech, Public Perceptions on Job Insecurity. Mr. Speaker, the government would accept that there have been long-simmering emotions amongst a sizable number of Singaporeans surrounding SICA, and more generally over the perception that Singaporeans are denied fair opportunities in the job market. Some of this has resulted in highly charged conversations and incidents both online and offline, even without the PSP's focus on this subject. Immigration and the job prospects of locals are not only issues for Singaporeans. Globalisation has meant that the local populations of many countries, particularly advanced economies, share such concerns. As a young nation, these feelings of insecurity and dislocation can shake our national co cohesion, with the country being unrecognisable to the one many of us grew up in. Job displacement is very emotionally jarring, especially when your HR department tells you that your role has been made redundant, only for you to later find out that your job has been rejigged and filled by a foreigner. It is also upsetting for Singaporeans when they learn that a foreigner has filled a job position for which a Singaporean is suitably qualified. The emotions that we see today, while directed differently towards Indians in some cases, have been directed at other communities in the past. As noted by Minister of Manpower in his ministerial statement in July, and I quote, in the 2000s we experienced a similar situation when the share of PRCs in our foreign workforce increased significantly before tapering as China's growth took off. Both then and now, the large numbers did not go unnoticed and created friction within our communities." Unquote. An important distinction between the vitriol directed against the PRC workers was that many of them, and was that many of them were employed in low middle income sectors, while there has been an acute focus on Indian professional workers today. Today, the influx of employees of Indian ethnicity not all of whom are from India. Some are from the US and elsewhere. Taking up competitively paying jobs has also activated emotions, activated emotions in not a small number of Singaporeans. Some ask, why can't our people do those jobs? After all, our students score so well on standardized tests. Our much vaunted education system should have put our workforce in a much better position. This is a subject MP Gerald Giam will speak on more about in his speech. Our sense of home is also affected when some EP and SPAS holders struggle to speak, let alone communicate in our workplace lingua franca, English, which represents a fundamental basis around which we organise public affairs in Singapore. When this happens, some Singaporeans stop feeling that we are one Singapore, all rowing in the same direction. Those Singaporeans who ride on the opportunities created by a growing economy, or who are new immigrants doing well economically, can more readily accept the new status quo. It is a small price to pay and one can interpret the new reality as the price of progress and economic growth. But for those who lose their jobs, see their income stagnate, and fear for their children's prospects in a competitive Singapore, and these are commonly the sandwich classed and low-income Singaporeans, strong feelings are aroused, with many feeling that the playing field is uneven and the government is slow to protect Singaporeans in their own land. Ordinary Singaporeans do not delve into the, in, into the intricacies of free trade agreements. Instead, they look around and come to conclusions based on what they perceive and experience. If Singaporeans have not for years been seeing, if Singaporeans have not for years been seeing foreigners occupying well-paying jobs, while qualified Singaporeans are unemployed or underemployed, we would not be talking about this today. Over the last two decades, the effect of the government's immigration and foreign talent policies has been so pervasive that former Prime Minister Goh Chok Tong covered the subject in his autobiography released only a few months ago, the second part of his autobiography. And I quote, take PRs for example, in the years before the numbers rose to 50,000 and then 70,000 a year, 
It was nearly 80,000 in 2008. I was surprised and annoyed. I told the Prime Minister so. Since then, we have kept the numbers to around 30,000 PRs every year. But even then, when you add the numbers up over the years, you will begin to feel the cumulative effects within the society and in daily living. And then he goes on. As a government, we needed to monitor the inflows of PRs and foreign workers, as well as demographic changes, more closely. No surprise that the people reacted in the way they did. The negative ground sentiment went beyond crowdedness. It also encompassed perceived job competitions from foreigners and preference of some companies for foreigners over Singaporeans." Unquote. So if a former Prime Minister whose job was not directly threatened or taken away by a foreigner can say he was surprised and annoyed, how much more so for a Singaporean who has experienced such fear of or actual loss of their livelihood?